Hey, it's uh, Dan Water from Exotic Motor Works. We've got a 1986 and a half, 928. Um, the AC's not working very well, and we're gonna check it out. Uh, there's two things that can typically go wrong with these 928s. Uh, with the AC system, one is the electrical side, and the other one is the Freon side. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the electrical stuff first. Um, the first thing we check is you turn the car on and see if the compressor is turning over. Um, it, is, it is on this car, however, I'm gonna walk you through as if it wasn't and uh, we'll go from there. We're gonna start with the pressure switch underneath the front cowl. Okay, we've got the uh, ignition on. We're gonna check the electrical portion of the AC system. Um, first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna check to see if we have power coming out of the control unit in the dash, because that's normally the problem with it. There's a couple of relays that fail all the time on those. Um, the easiest way to check that, we're gonna just take a test light, clip it on a known good ground, check our light real quick, make sure it works, it does. Power comes out of the uh, control unit in the dash and goes to a uh, anti-freezing protection switch right here. It's got two wires on it. We're just gonna check each side of it, see if we have power coming out. Power to one side. And power to the other side. So we have power through the switch. Uh, that means the control unit is working, um, the uh, relays and fuses are good, we have power to the anti freezing uh, switch. Uh, power comes back down and goes up underneath the receiver dryer bottle um, to a switch, it's a low pressure uh, switch. It'll turn off if we run out of Freon. This is our low pressure switch. Um, power comes down one of these wires from the uh, anti-freezing switch and through the switch if we have enough pressure, out the other wire to the compressor. So we should have power on both sides of the switch if the switch is good and it's enough power. So we have power on that side, and we've got power on that side. That means we've got power through to the compressor uh, from here. As you can see, the AC compressor is turning, however, we're still not getting cold air. Most likely, we just have a low Freon condition, so we're gonna hook up the uh, machine and see what our pressures are. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is check some pressures. The car's gonna be off, not running. Let's we'll start with the high side, just because it's easy. Sounds like we got a little pressure there. Open our valve, and we can see it's about 45 pounds of pressure. That's kind of low. Um, Probably not gonna allow our compressor to uh, kick in. All right, hooking up the uh, low side, blue hose. On 86 and a half cars, the low side service port is underneath the upper radiator hose. It's kind of tight, and you'll not want to do this if the radiator hose is too hot to touch because you're gonna be getting real cozy with it here. We had a little air in the system um, and it was almost out of Freon. So we went ahead and evacuated the old Freon out and pulled it into a good hard vacuum. Um, now we're getting ready to charge the system. Uh, we've hooked up, we've got the high and low sides hooked up. Um, we've got both the valves open, clipped the can on, we just opened up and now we're putting Freon in without the car uh, running through both the high and low side. Before we start the car, we need to make sure we close the high side valve because we don't want the uh, high side pressure to come up through the high side hose and go up into our can and explode, that'd be a bad day. So we're gonna shut this. Low side's still open. We're gonna go ahead and shut this off because we don't actually want the compressor running uh, while we're sucking in. Um, we wanna modulate the amount of Freon we're putting in with the car running. So we're gonna temporarily close our can off from the system. Our high side's completely cut off. Uh, we're gonna start the car now and look at our low side reading. So we've got the uh, car up to the machine, uh, we've got it running. We're now gonna uh, continue putting the rest of the Freon into the car. Um, we have our high side shut, we wanna make sure the high side stays shut because we don't want any back feeding uh, from the compressor. Um, we look at our uh, pressure here, we're about uh, 30 pounds of pressure. We wanna make sure this doesn't get much above 55 pounds as we're charging, we wanna modulate it because uh, that's kind of hard on the compressor to put that much uh, on the low side. So I'm gonna slowly open the valve right here, which is gonna make this gauge go up. And I'm just controlling it here, allowing it to flow in, even if below 50 or 55 pounds. And you can see we're just, that cam is about empty. 
We're just gonna let it flow in. It's gonna take a while for the can. It needs to warm up and get the pressure in. So in addition to recharging the AC system with Freon, we went ahead and put some um, AC oil with some ultraviolet dye uh, in the system. Um, that'll help us find any leaks in the future uh, that may pop up. All we need is a black light and we can go over the uh, hoses and stuff and that'll show up really good. So uh, we did that as well. So we've just finished charging and we turned the uh, car off. We want to disconnect the low side as uh, quickly as possible because the uh, Freon is going to be equalized from the high side to the low side. That's why I just undid that right underneath the operator hose. Uh, we're going to let the car cool off a little bit before we undo the high side because uh, it's going to make a mess with the oil and dye and everything um, and the high pressure. So we'll give it a few minutes to let it uh, equalize and then we'll go ahead and disconnect the high side too. So we're done charging the AC on this 928. It blows nice and cold um, and everything's working good. Uh, this is kind of a classic example of what happens to a lot of these older cars when they get in the hands of uh, mechanics that aren't familiar with them. Um, this customer originally took this car to another shop um, and they told him he needed an AC compressor and an expansion valve. And what we found when we got into it, um, we went to put the low side hose on and the threads were a little bit messed up on the low side uh, AC port, service port. So we went ahead and cleaned those threads up a little bit got the hose on, got the readings we expected to see, and we're able to evacuate and recharge uh, the system from there without the need for a new compressor and uh, expansion valve. So there you go.